and welcome to Flavorful Eats. Today I have the uh, honor of having um, Neelam Sahani as my guest, all the way from Boston, who's very interested in healthy vegetarian food. So with that, we get started. We're doing three very simple dishes, a good start to the new year. Absolutely. We're starting with an omelet, and then we're doing a pasta dish, and then a we pasta dish. Much, yes. <laughs> So, um, with not the pan on pasta, but we're going to start off with the um, squash only because it takes a long time to cook. Yep. So, we're using a spaghetti squash as an alternative to a regular uh, um, high calorie, high carb um, pasta. So spaghetti squash is a great alternative to regular pasta. Um, it really mimics the texture of pasta without having all the carb and the, the wheat. So, it's a good gluten free option for someone who wants to go gluten free for the new year. Um, it's really simple to cook. We just cut it in half. We're going to bake it at 450 for 30 minutes. Yes, 450 is very uh, important to have the uh, correct temperature. And, and you're just going to be putting a little bit of drizzling a little bit of oil, yeah. uh, oil on it and some salt. We're just going to be drizzling a little bit of oil. I'm just going to scoop out the insides of the squash. We don't want that. So uh, aren't these uh, seeds really healthy? To, I would, uh, toast, we can keep them and I would them. toast the seeds and use it as a... a, a it's very good for zinc and a whole lot of different things. So, yeah, and that's a very good tool. Um, using a, a I'm scoop. using just a regular measuring cup to uh, just scoop out. But you could seed. use a regular um, a spoon. spoon to yeah. work. It'll work too. I put these in my smoothie stew. It's actually uh, one of the more nutritional part of the, of the of whole. Of the squash, yes, the seeds itself. The seeds, yes. So you put them in raw? Yes, in the smoothies. Or dry them for next season to plant them in your own garden. That's a good tip. Yeah. So you're just going to have put that onto the um, pan. I'm going to put them onto a lined baking sheet. There's a little, little bit of olive oil. Some people like to salt at this point. I just, I skip that step, but you're more than free to salt it at this point. So we're just going to be using a, you want to use oil that can um, sustain high temperatures. So uh, avocado oil that we're using now is good. Grapeseed oil is also good. We try to avoid um, oils like olive oil that get denatured at a high temperature. Yes, and that's not good for your system once yeah. that happens. They're hot, like, so this basically the healthy oil of olive oil is very healthy oil, but once it's cooked, it turns into not Coconut oil would be a very good alternative also for people who want to yeah. look at the medium chain fatty yeah. acids and all that. Coconut oil, I think, would be fantastic and give it a different taste also. So this is going to be the last thing we bake. We're going to pop it into the oven so it's ready for us. So that's going to be baking for uh, 30 minutes. And in the meantime, um, Neelam is going to be making us an omelette, a very interesting omelette using chickpea flour. So oh. this, is an, this is made in uh, India a lot. It's an alternative. It's almost like a pancake. Um, so we're going to mix our ingredients. We have one cup of graham flour. It's also known as chickpea flour, some ground cumin, some red chili, um, cilantro, you can use any herb that you want to add to it, some diced onions, and some spinach, just for some extra nutrients. So we just add the cup of uh, gram flour into our bowl. Gram flour is another name for chi uh, chickpeas. Chickpea flour. Yes. Which is Gabanzo beans, actually, yeah. that has been uh, broken down and put into, made into flour. So gram flour actually is, um, one cup of gram flour has about 22 grams of protein. So it's, it's a an very high excellent protein. source of protein and it's gluten free. Gluten free. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about your cholesterol with this one. No. So you're putting stuff in, uh, you, you put in some spinach and now you put in some cilantro. Cilantro and I put in the onions already and I'm just going to put a little bit of ground, just like a couple of inches of ground cumin and you put the chili according to your taste and salt So I would also. say like half a teaspoon of um, cumin and a uh, quarter teaspoon of uh, what's your? Uh, red, red chili. Red chili. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then You're we very just need brave some using water. your fingers. <laughs> we just need some water. <laughs> <laughs> so we use about a cup of water. One cup of water? Yeah. yeah see, Neelam is so used to doing this, she's just using her uh, uh, eye. She's eyeballing it. I had to, I, I, my friends ask for recipes, so I come up with recipes. But otherwise, I don't really have recipes. I just, I eyeball it all. So and you want this? this and, 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 and to make sure that people know that you don't really need any baking powder or anything to this. this no, is just people, it's unlike pancakes, it doesn't need any baking powder, which is better on your stomach as well. You don't get any extra excessive gas so or anything. So for those who don't like maybe a green chili or a cumin, 
Cumin is always good. Cumin and turmeric, I would say, use it in everything. Yeah. It's good. To, it'll help you digest those uh, garbanzo beans. Mm -hmm. If people have issues with the, the stomach with the chickpeas, yeah. so the cumin will actually help in the digestion pro process. Uh, but you don't need the, the chili, uh, red chili powder is optional. Yeah. That's too tough. And I have green chili as well sometimes. Uh -huh. but it's optional to, to how much spice you want. But it's all. And also the cilantro. If you don't like a cilantro, you can please yourself and use parsley. Some people actually make this as a savory. So they actually, and I, I made it as a savory. People actually make it as a sweet. sweet. So you can actually go the other route, add some maple syrup to it, some cinnamon, and make it like a sweet cream. And you'll get uh, a little bit like uh, um, French toast. <laughs> yeah. So this one I like to, um, it does tend to lump up a little, so you just mix it through a little. It's going to um, be nice and watery. And the that's the batter has to be watery. It has to be watery. Uh, like a crepe, you said, right? Yeah. More like a crepe. So I think we're ready. So we're going to, we have our pan. Yes, the pan is starting Our to pan get is some. getting hot. So yeah. we, we have our pan on the t stove, and you, we're not sure about this nonstick, so you're using some uh, we're oil. We're using some oil on just because it's not our traditional stove. And... Um, as you can see, the batter is nice and thin. We've taken out any of the lumps just by whisking it around. So we're just going to pour a little bit into it. Nice little sizzle there. And we'll just spread it out so it's nice and thin. It looks like an omelet. And you're quickly going to see it's going to start drying up. How the edges are kind of wet and then it gets nice and dry in the middle. And once it all starts to bubble up and get dry, then that's how we'll know when to flip it. Mm. But when it hits the pan, you get the nice little sizzle. Can you smell that? It's like amazing. Yes, and it's so high in protein. And, and this is exactly your passion, right? To bring uh, healthy food, minimum cooking, minimum time preparation, right? For the picking, look, there's a nice little flip there. We got a perfect omelet there. Yeah, so I want to... This I is an overcooked omelet, but that's fine. Huh? <laughs> for this one, it tastes a little better. If you leave for, yes. the, for the gram flour, the chickpea flour, if you leave it under, you're going to get that gooey texture. It's not really not appealing. Not just gooey. You get the bitterish taste because you really want to cook the flour. Yeah. The flour needs to be cooked it in order to for be it to cooked. be, so it tastes nutty yes. and it's uh, yummy in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I like to provide, I mean, we all have picky eaters in our home, be it our kids, be it our husbands, be it our parents, and so I like to provide healthy options that are still, they taste good, because unless they taste good, nobody's going nobody's to eat it. Right. So this is like a perfect, it's satisfying, it tastes good, and it's decadent. And wholesome, healthy. Yeah. Excuse me. So I'm serving this with some, um, I made some mint chutney. So I'm serving it with that. You can eat it with ketchup. You can eat so it with any uh, sauce. Just to run down how you did your mint chutney while you're waiting so for that to cook? My mint chutney is just um, it's fresh mint, one onion, uh, lemon juice, and salt, and green chili. The green chili, again, is optional to your taste preference. And so you, you actually um, use a bunch of uh, mint from the store? Uh, a bunch of mint, yeah. A bunch okay. of fresh mint. Um, so with a bunch, you use season, one onion. Yeah, and you use one onion with a bunch. Um, it's in season, it's, it grows abundance in the garden. It grows great in the garden. I so love January is full of snow. Uh, so, yeah. so. <laughs> but it's nice even in January, even though we can't get the fresh herbs from our garden, it's still nice to put them into our meals and yes. makes, us, makes us feel a little more not so gloomy about the snow outside. And also mint is very good also in a lot of different uh, um, helps with digestion. And yeah, which pairs up great with this because it is made out of the chickpea, which some people it's, it's a little tough on their stomach. So... With the mint, it just balances it right out. Mm -hmm. Yes, mint is good for the tummy. So we're all set. We have our nice little omelet. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Serve it. And then, okay, we'll do one more for That's your sake. That looks really good. So again, we just pour it out. You get the nice little sizzle. And we just spread it out nice and thin. And you can really make this any variation you want. Like we said earlier, you can turn this into a sweet crepe kind of. You can make it into, um, you can put tomatoes in it mm -hmm. if you like. I mean, if you want to add cheese, you can even add cheese to it. It's, it's really what you want, it's where you want to take it. Uh, nutritional yeast could be added in there too. It'll add extra uh, yeah. uh, B vitamins and things like that, so it makes more balance. And if uh, somebody wants a little more iodine, you could add uh, seaweed, a little bit oh, of seaweed. Oh, seaweed would be a good one. I've never yes. tried that. Um, so, yeah, we're always looking for different alternatives to get things It's a going. great way. I mean, I actually, um, my friend, she makes it for her kids. She puts shredded carrots into it. So it's a good way to sneak in some extra vegetables for the kids that don't like eating just vegetables. Eat vegetables. Yeah, That's true. And, and now that it's nice and bubbled quickly. and dry, we'll just switch it. Yeah, and it's really quick. Like, your Saturday morning, you're not going to be spending over the stove. You're just 15, 20 minutes and everyone is fed. 
There you go, and it's all cooked. It's all cooked and ready for your next. Uh, so that's breakfast. That's an easy alternative. Um, completely plant based. No, no eggs. No. It's, it's actually a vegan friendly. If you have mm. any vegan friends, it's a very vegan friendly meal, and it's simple to do. All right. Neelam, I'm looking forward to doing this no cheese mac and cheese. I know. Come in the winter months, I'm all about foods that are really indulgent and guilty. And there's like no bigger indulgence than mac and cheese. It's right. one of my most like guilty so indulgence. That being said, you've got the elbows, you're going to be putting it into the... Uh, yeah, we got some, so we got some whole wheat elbow uh, pasta. You can also use gluten-free pasta, whatever your preference is. So you and have it to... Um, that's going to take about eight minutes to boil. So then while, we, while that's happening, we're going to actually make our cheese sauce. So our cheese sauce is going to consist of, it's two carrots, one sweet potato. We have three quarters of a cup of uh, nutritional, nutritional yeast. yeast. That gives you the cheese. Uh, that gives you a nice cheesy flavor. Mm. It has like a little nutty flavor to it without the cheese. So it really tricks your mind into believing that you're eating mac and cheese. And um, we got some turmeric for its excellent benefits and also for some color. So you want to chop while you talk about yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> and then we also, um, and we're going to add the juice of half a lemon and just salt and pepper to taste. So it's really a straightforward meal. It doesn't take much. And the crazy part about this meal is when you're eating it, you actually do feel guilty because you feel like you're having a bowl of mac and cheese. And then you remind yourself that it's mostly just vegetables. And you become okay with it. <laughs> so we're going to let that boil. It's going to boil for about 10 minutes. So once those are tender, we're just going to mix everything up. So the thing is with this, the, the, this particular thing is um, when you're uh, doing this sort of dishes, um, the only thing is the pasta that's yeah. uh, a little bit uh, more indulgent. And with that, you could actually use your squash if you didn't want to use that. That's, and that's why you're doing the next one. So with that being said, now you, you're still going to be making a sauce. You're making a sauce with the nutritional yeah. yeast. So we get that going. So our sauce is just going to be, um, we're going to add the, our vegetables once they're boiled. And I'll go ahead and start squeezing our lemon juice into our, our mixer. So it's just a juice of half a lemon. So do you add salt while you're boiling this or, or you do it later? It's your preference. I, um, I typically don't salt my pasta, okay. but you, if, you, if you want to, you can. I'm just checking whether you <laughs> do or not. No, no if you want to. No. I, I, I try to use less salt. But, um, Which is a good thing. But yeah. But, but you if you're using a good uh, But it salt, is a like good way to add, yeah. Himalayan salt or Celtic salt or one of that. It's not, yeah. not a bad thing. But it is a good way to add flavor to your dish, just yes. adding a little bit of salt to the pasta itself while it's boiling. Believe it or not, one minute is already gone with this boiling of this pasta. Wow. <laughs> so we got the juice of our lemon in there. And to that, we're going to add our nutritional yeast, three quarters of a cup. So this was measured out three quarters. So you just want to yeah. put it in? Oh, the entire thing is three quarters. Three quarters up, yeah. So nutritional yeast is one, as it's, the name says, it's, uh, it, is, um, nutritional, it is nutritious. And it has all the B vitamins. Are you putting half yeah. a teaspoon of half that? Half a teaspoon of turmeric. And that gives you the color, like the cheese. It really gives you the cheesy color, and it actually, it's, I mean, turmeric is great, especially in the winter months. It helps, um, it helps fight off colds. We, our body needs it. Mm -hmm. And it's, I like to sneak it in whenever I can. And Just a little bit of salt. And the nutritional yeast also has, is very high in protein. It's high in protein. It also has selenium, which is like, mm -hmm. a lot of times um, in this winter months, we're yeah. not exposed to as much vitamin yes. D. So we really get, um, our thyroid sometimes starts to act up, right. and the selenium really helps balance out our hormones. So it's actually a wonderful thing, especially in the winter months to have. Just some black pepper to your taste. I mean, if, if your kids are picky, they don't want the black pepper, you can also skip this step. We have a check on our vegetables. So you drop water on the stove, the stove goes off. So you just Not want it crunchy, right. you don't want it too, uh, too um, soft. Yeah, just a little, a little gentle so they can go ahead and blend nicely. Al dente. Oh, so you're waiting for that to, yeah, to, to blend. To blend it, yeah. So in the meantime, you can get your things ready for your uh, pesto. So you're doing a pesto with your third dish. So for our third dish, we're actually making a, a basil cashew pesto. So the ingredients are really simple for that. It's just going to be basil, cashews, and some lemon, salt, and some olive oil. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and bring the mixer by me. You're using a garlic, right? Raw garlic? So to our blender, we're just going to add our basil. 
I have a half a cup of cashews. Um, if you don't have a high power blender or a, a mixer, you can use, actually soak the cashews yes, soak for 30 minutes or even overnight and it'll make them tender and it's a lot easier to blend. Um, and to that we'll just add, I'm going to eyeball it, I would say about two tablespoons of olive oil. We have recipes for all of this, so you're welcome to write to flavorfuleats at gmail.com for the recipes. Uh, we will be posting it online as we, uh, with, the, with the show. Yeah. And uh, you're also quite okay to contact Neelam. You have a web page too, right? So my Instagram is My Flavorful Life. It's similar to, similar to yours. Yes. <laughs> my Flavorful Life is my Instagram, and that's also my email, myflavorfullife at gmail.com. So I think um, we'll probably have a link to that, our posting of that. So after you add some salt, this also gets half the, half the juice of a lemon. So instead of um, pine nuts, you're using cashews. Instead of, uh, and for similar reasons, in the winter months, I really like to use cashews because um, it's a lesser known fact, but they're actually a mood stabilizer. They actually enhance your mood. And they actually have a good uh, amount of zinc. Zinc yeah. is needed for the cold months to um, get... Uh, Stabilize your cold. So in the winter, in the summer months, I don't use cashews so much, but definitely in the winter, I really like to use cashews. My nuts of preference: cashews and walnuts. Walnuts. The yeah. cashews has they have some amazing benefits. And walnuts, if you want to do half enough, you're welcome to as yeah. well because uh, walnuts have your omega three, which you don't quite get in your. Um, in, as vegetarians, people say you don't get your omega three, but you can if you use yeah, wa exactly. walnuts. Yeah. There's so many. I mean, it's, I think yeah, it's just you have to what you eat. You have to just be careful about it and get it in there. And then, so we're just going to pulse this up. Did you switch it on? I forgot. So and do also, you like a crunchy presto? Or you like a I like to keep it a little textured, but I also, um, I'm going to actually add um, two cloves of garlic. If you want to, if you don't like the, if you don't like the case of raw garlic, you can add roasted garlic, but I really feel like, um, with the basil being so prominent, you don't really taste it. It just enhances the flavor. So I don't mind raw garlic in the pesto. Well, but you one can good roast fact, the if you if roast you like. the garlic, you're getting better health benefit of the garlic. Yeah. C cooked garlic is always better for you than uh, raw. What are some of the benefits of garlic? Oh, there's lots. It's another, it's another one to fight away your cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very good one there. Do you want to test this for doneness? Yeah, I think that's good. So that's we'll go good. ahead and strain that. So I'll strain it right here. I have my tools right here. Do you save and your... And it's also going to... It's going to have some residual cooking as well. Do you like to... You save your water? I'll save a little bit of the water just in case... Um, it gets a bit dry. But for this case, we're not going to really need it because I also have the vegetable water. Right. So if my sauce needs it, I can use that as and, well. And... Um, I'm just going to blend that up. So with that being said, if I have to do this vegetable, I'll actually put very much less water in this. Yeah. Only because I want to preserve the, uh, the uh, nutrients in yeah. the vegetable. So I will, um, so it just cooks in its own little liquid. So That's what I usually do is I, I, I'll usually, I'll keep this water. I'll add some, um, when I'm cooking my side dish with it, use some kale or some broccoli. And then I'll save this water as my vegetable broth. So in a couple of days oh, when I'm yes. making, when I make a soup, I use the same water for the soup instead of, when you, you, when you make your own vegetable broth, you don't have to worry about the sodium content as well, so I like to do that. But yeah, using less water, if you're not planning on using the water, I would definitely recommend using less water. Yes, much less water, yes. So those are just about ready. So that's ready yeah. for your... So we can go ahead and add these to this. Let me just get the one with... You want me to bring that closer or...? I'll move this. Let me hold it for you. <laughs> it's handy to have <laughs> a second person around. It makes cooking so much funner. Yes. So we're just going to add this Very term. much more fun for sure. So the thing is, um, you didn't add salt or anything in there, right? No, so add a little bit of salt to this and the, the yes, nutritional the yeast itself is going to add a lot of flavor. And then once the sauce is ready and even once the mac and cheese is ready, you can doctor it up. Um, I like to add a little hot sauce to mine. You can add whatever you want to it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, we'd like hot sauce <laughs> in anything. Any particular hot sauce you think about? Um, my go-to is sriracha. Uh. That's, that's the Californian in me. <laughs> we put sriracha on everything, but... Okay, so that's done. So once that's in there, we just go ahead and blend it up. So I'm going to actually add a little bit of the water that we use to cook the vegetables in, because it is... Too thick. It is going to be a little too thick. So 
your sauce is ready. Wow. Just about. I'm going to just give it a quick stir because the nutritional yeast is. So just to show you that while we're waiting for um, Neelam, that we, th this is now cooked. It's, it's uh, fork tender. I know I'm using a knife, but it's fork tender. Yeah. So. Uh, We're actually going to use a fork to spoon it out. Yes. So for our mac and cheese, we'll finish this up. Mm -hmm. Let me just get the bowl. We just add our macaroni, our elbow mac pasta. And we're just going to pour our lovely cheese sauce right over. And that looks macaroni and cheese, all right. I got macaroni and cheese. If you didn't know better, <laughs> you wouldn't know. Yes. <laughs> the turmeric and everything in it. And there you have it, vegan mac and cheese. Okay. And now we're going to finish our last dish. So we, uh, you, you finished your pesto. This the is pesto cooked. Pesto is all done. So I took this out of the oven for you and it was like fork tender we found out, yeah. right? So now it's all and good. It's, so ours has had a little, it's had a couple minutes to sit, so it's actually able to, we're able to handle it. If you just take it out of the oven, I recommend putting a paper towel or a towel because it's going to be too hot to touch. But since ours has been sitting for a couple minutes, I'm fine holding it. So we just got a fork and we're just going to go like this. And this pasta is going to form itself. This is like the magic of, you want to try one? The mm -hmm. magic of spaghetti squash. It's always like such an amazement. It's a really fun dish to get kids involved in. They always like seeing the squash turn into pasta. Just like that. And then you have your spaghetti. And we're just going to transfer it over to our plate. So you did this in a convection oven at 400 degrees, but if you don't have a convection, 100, 400 is fine. I 400, mean 450. Yeah, 450 usually. Um, you can watch it usually. I mean, if most ovens at my home, I do 450 for 30 minutes. But you can, you know, depending on your oven temperature, four, between 400 to 450 works best for it. So I'm going to go ahead with half the squash. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cover this pasta. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to be needing that, but we can go ahead and make that. We'll just add our pesto. So that's if you want to get the two forks, and we're just going to mix it right up. With our cad, this is the cashew basil pesto that we made earlier. And we'll just mix it right through. Great. Let me not mix, mess your stuff up. That's <laughs> fine. And again, it was, I mean... This also, I mean, the, it, it's a, it takes a little bit longer just for the, pasta, the squash to roast, but the actual cook time of you having to look at it is, I would say, about 10 minutes. Even less. Yeah, which is awesome because in our busy lives nowadays, nobody wants to sit over a stove and be cooking for hours on end. So that was our meal for the day. You made your, maybe I should just bring that up. These are our, our wonderful winter indulgences. So these will help you stay with your New Year's resolution and eat while eating healthy and enjoying it. You're not going to, the best thing about these meals is you feel the comfort, you don't feel deprived. And best of all, you're getting your nutrients and you're giving your family nutrition, nutritious meals. Just to recap our meals for today. The idea for today was a day in a life of healthy eating. So we started off with breakfast, which yep. is your omelet. Uh, which was with uh, chickpea our, flour, yeah, with chickpea uh, flour. flour and, um, and, and seasoning. And then you went on to lunch, lunch being a little heavier yeah. than dinner, which is spaghetti and... Um, with our mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, no cheese mac and cheese. Yes. So, and the thing is, like I said earlier on, if you don't want to eat the spaghetti, you can actually do the, the um, squash. Yeah. And there's so many different varieties now. If you are gluten-free, if you need gluten-free, this. And this actually, the cheese sauce that we made today, it's actually, if you cut back on the water a little, you make it a little thicker, it makes a great nacho cheese sauce. So if you want to yes. eat it with nachos or want to have it in quesadillas, it's also a wonderful route to go with that. And then you had that for dinner, your spaghetti Spaghetti sauce, sauce with, with our basil cashew, cashew pesto, pesto, which I cannot wait to try this one. Why don't you do try it Do you want to right take now? a try of this? You can try it right now. Go ahead. This is my one of my absolute favorites. Mm. As you uh, in, in envisioned it to be, even I better. love spaghetti squash. Never disappoint. I love the I love the crunch that the spaghetti squash has. Oh, it's so fantastic. I so do hope you guys try some of these mem uh, these recipes. Thank uh, yes. you for having me. You are more than welcome. Thank you for coming all <laughs> the way. And I, hopefully, you're going to be joining me for many more segments because this is just what I like to do: cook healthy food yeah. and a short space of time and doesn't do much to your waistline. No. But it's got oh
powerhouse of nutrition. Absolutely. So it's, uh, we have our balanced meal right here, with lots of protein, uh, it's got everything. Yeah, very rich in vitamins, very rich in protein, and it's like you don't even have to sneak in the vegetables because most of it is vegetables. <laughs> and uh, everybody complains about uh, lack of vitamin B12 yeah. uh, um, vegetarians, but your um, nutritional yeast did that just for did that. Did that trick, yeah? Yes, did that trick. So you're high in protein, in B12, and just about everything. Yeah. And if you wanted to add more omega-3, add some walnuts to your pesto, yeah. you would have got your omega-3 right there. And you can but even um, sprinkle some flax, like uh, if you want to sneak in some extra, like, you know, uh, omegas or even nutrients, sprinkle some ground flax seed on top of this, or even a side salad that you make with it, and it's also a wonderful way. And that could add fiber, but we already have fiber in your chickpea yeah. flour there too. So we, we, we well covered, covered right it. here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, with that, thank you very much. Until we meet again on Flavorful Eats, Thank you, uh, Neelam, and please do join us once again. Absolutely, I look soon. forward to it. And uh, enjoy. Uh, January is comfort month, and you know, after all the feast, this is the perfect way to go for next month. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.